Hey everyone, I'm Brian. Happy Friday to you. This is take number four on this particular video. Uh, again, we've been having some technical difficulties with the audio. Don't know if it's on our end or if it's on Facebook's end, but either way, hey, one thing about Brian, I persist. I keep going. I promised you 365 live videos and I'm going to get it done. All right, so hopefully you can now hear me. You probably don't hear me as well because I don't have all my little extra speakers that I normally have on uh, for you to be able to hear me. But hopefully this will work. Today I want to talk to you about the principle of resemblance. Is it important? And what is it? You bet it's important. In fact, it can affect greatly and can even have deadly consequences with dogs and children in your household. And also, it can affect how your other dogs get along in your household. The principle of resemblance was a key component to nature's way of controlling aggression among social predators. Remember, competitive aggression is the number one cause of aggression on the planet Earth. You only have so many resources and yet you have so many animals wanting those resources, buying for them. Within a social group, you have many predators living together because they need one another to be able to go after those resources. So she put hierarchies in place. We talked about those earlier this week, and those were there to blunt aggression. Hey, if I happen to be wolf one and you're wolf two, and there's only enough food for one of us, I'm getting it, you're not. Nature put that there, so two would say, one, you may have the food, and we're not going to fight over it, and we're not going to kill one another. All right, so that worked like a champ until wolf one, male, maybe wolf two, female. It can be the opposite, trust me, in a wolf pack. This is called a mating pair. Next thing you know, they have offspring. The offspring grows up just like you. You have a family, you get married, and you have children. One day your children grows up. It just seems like it happens just overnight. It really does. And next thing you know, you're looking at your children eye to eye. Well, the same thing happens out here in wolf packs, lion prize, any sort of social group. One day, Papa Wolf looks across the way and goes, you know, hey honey, have you seen Junior lately? That boy's got a little size on him, and he's also got a bit of an attitude. I think it might be time for him to go. And that's exactly what happens. Junior has to leave. Not all the juniors, like I drew up here on the board. An, uh, a wolf pack, when they have their offspring, they could have maybe four juniors and only one missing. Or they could have four misses and only one junior. But regardless of what they have, if any of these males or females grow up to look like mom, be as big as mom, the stature is the same as mom, the temperament is the same. The competitiveness is the same. The ability to dominate is the same. I grew up just like you, Mom, or I grew up just like you, Dad. If that happens, we have a problem because now we virtually have two number ones, two number twos, and nature does not favor anything, any sort of equality because now we have a problem. What happens when there's only enough food for number one, but I have virtually two number ones? So to take care of that, she put in the principle of resemblance, alerting the true number one, hey, you have a problem. Just so you know, your son's gotten a little bit bigger and he's starting to push you a little bit. Might be time for him to go. Now nature helped dad out. All wolves up until they're two years of age, not your dogs, but wolves, and again, this is where this instinct came from. Up to two years of age are asexual. Suddenly at two years of age, about the time they're head level with dad, starting to push dad, starting to push mom, there's suddenly a sexual awareness button that's turned on in their heads. And fortunately, both of those older children go, you know, I think I'm supposed to go start my own family. So in other words, hey, mom, dad, it's been real. I'm gonna miss you, but I'm out of here. It's a good thing because off they go to start their own path. Now, junior number four, junior number five, he may be able to hang around for a little while. Depends on how much food there is and all sorts of things. But by golly, junior number one, he's gone. Missy number one, 
She's gone. There we go. Competition solved. No one needs to fight anyone. Okay, so how does this play into today's dogs? They still carry within them the principle of resemblance. And when I wrote the book, The Hammer, Why Dogs Attack Us and How to Prevent It, there's a dedication section in the book. And in this dedication section, you'll see column after column after column, page after page after page of victims. These are dead people. I know it's hard to swallow that, but it's the truth. They're dead. Here's the hardest thing to swallow. Half of them were children. And half of those children, it was the family dog that killed them. So let me kind of give you a visual so you understand why this happened. I'm going to borrow Rowan. Rowan happens to be the son of Joshua Huffmaster. He's our supervisor for training here at Tame the Wild. And this is his son. Hey, Rowan, can I borrow you, buddy? Come on over here. It's your time to become famous here. Famous. Hey, how you doing, man? Okay, face the dog. All right, now come stand over here. Turn around. Just breathe. Stay. Good, good boy. If I had a treat, I'd give you one. All right, as you guys can see here, Rowan is about head level with this stuffed dog. Head level. Okay, now you can see it from the dog's perspective. Zoom in on there, Paul. Head level. Head level. Okay, thanks, Rowan. Appreciate it, buddy. All right, so what does that mean? It means your dog does not see Rowan as a child. Remember, out here, if you're tiny, if you're way smaller than me, you're a cub. For a dog, you're a pup. But when I can look you eye to eye, you're not a child. You are a possible opponent to me. You are a possible competitor to me. You are a possible threat to me. Eye to eye. I cannot tell you how many times over the years I've interviewed moms and dads of children who were attacked by the family dog. And they ask me, how can this happen, Brian? I got this dog as a puppy as soon as the child was born. So he would go up to be her big brother and protect her. And three years later, next thing you know, he attacks the daughter. Why? Because he doesn't see a, a sister. Remember, these are dogs, they're not humans. Number two, he has a object in his mouth, as I write about in my book, Embracing the Wild and Your Dog. In that case, there was a Rottweiler named Rocky, and the little girl saw Rocky with her Barbie doll in his mouth. She approached, what did Rocky see? A human coming at me, eye level with me. If you're eye level and you're taller, again, you just now fell under the rules of the principle of resemblance. And as soon as she approached, he growled. She ignored, raised his teeth, still ignored. She reached for the Barbie, he attacks. She leaves, he keeps Barbie in the story for him. The principle of resemblance. It's also why you can have a large dog and a very small dog not go through the same thing. Big dog goes, you're nothing to me. But again, it all depends upon attitude as well. But dogs learn through their eyes first. And this principle of resemblance is very, very powerful. In our household, we have two Morkies as part of our pack. Little multi Yorkie mixes. I showed you a video of one irritating one the other day when it was time to eat. But we brought a large German Shepherd into our household while the Morkies were there. And he was big and he was powerful. And he looked down at these Morkies and he went, whatever. And he never had an issue with them. To him, because you were so small, you were no competitor to me. And he also had the temperament to back that up. So he never really had an issue with the dogs getting along. So how does the principle of resemblance affect dogs getting along? Okay, here's why. Several times, uh, I cannot tell you how many times over here people have asked me, hey Brian, I want to get another dog and bring it into my household. Do you have any advice? Hi, Rob. Oh, yes, I have advice. And here it goes. You need to avoid this at all costs at all costs. So here's a couple little rules on that. One, if you're ever going to own more than one dog, try to own opposite genders. That's rule number one. 
This principle of resemblance usually stays within its own gender category here. Dad is not concerned about oldest daughter unless he just comes straight down to food. But you're also not going to invade my mating capabilities here and my mating rights. So therefore, I'm more concerned about Junior. And Mom is concerned about the oldest daughter. So again, the only time you typically have principal resemblance conflicting is if it's in its own gender or if it's just pure food. It doesn't matter. If there's only a male or a female, at the end of the day, if there's only enough food for one, then someone's going to get it and someone's going to go hungry. Okay, so always tell opposite genders, number one, and you'll help avoid the principle of resemblance. And as far as spaying and neutering, know this. That will simply stop your dog's ability to impregnate another animal or become impregnated by another animal. It does not turn off their brains as far as what gender they are. There's been 50 million studies that have proven that, and I have personally observed how dogs behave after they've been neutered or after they've been spayed. So if you can't get that done, you just says, okay, Brian, I have, a, I have a male dog, and I want to get another male dog, you know, what do I do? Well, then try to get dogs that are not going to be of the same size. Size helps. If I'm bigger, they're smaller, you got a better chance that they'll get away because you're again avoiding the principle of resemblance. Rule number three, try to, if you say, okay, Brian, well, I'm, I'm going to get two dogs. They're both going to be the same gender. They're going to be about the same size. Then here's rule number three, have a great disparity in temperament. Again, remember I told you, dad doesn't care if Junior number four, junior number five hangs around for a while. After all, I'm going to need you guys when we go hunting those big elk and moose come this winter. I just need number one to go. Because why number one? Number one's attitude. So be careful about that. If you have two male dogs, they're going to be the same size. Make sure they don't have the same temperament baseline. Make sure they don't. If they're both pushy, they're both wanting to dominate, you're going to have a persistent problem. And then number four, okay, so, oh my gosh, you're really sneaking it hard. I'm getting two of the same dogs, same genders, same size, same temperament. One last thing, make sure they're a decade apart ages. Because at some point, you get old enough where you just go, okay, fine, you can have it. I don't care. After all, I am a dog. After all, I am living in a household. And just hopefully, just food to keep coming, or just keep it coming where I'm never hungry enough to want to fight you over the food. Principle of resemblance. It is everything. Never think for a second that your dog will ever see your child as a child as soon as it can stand head level with your dog or stand over your dog. At that moment there, you change. You change because that's the way it is in the wild. And that's all I know. I, I'm only a dog. I only know how to be a dog. I don't know how to judge you from a human's viewpoint. I can only judge you from a dog's viewpoint. Okay, very important stuff. Again, the principle of resemblance. Now, the reason why I'm putting out all these videos this week is I'm laying a foundation so I can fall back on this so when you guys call me or you guys send in, I have to address on the video and you say, hey, Brian, I've got these two dogs and I need your help making them get along. Well, the first thing I'm going to say to you after you tell me you have a principle of resemblance condition is I'm glad you used the word make because that's all it's going to be. You're going to have to make them get along. Hey, you down over there, you stay over there. In other words, you're going to become a zookeeper. So again, I'm going to refer back to all these things I've been going over this week. Things about signals, things about behavior as far as dogs go concerned to, with regards to human behavior. The principle of resemblance, threat zones, critical zones, you name it. All of these will be used in my super, uh, soon to be explanations of other questions that you guys have. But I'm always so happy when people walk in and say, I need you to help me make these dogs get along because I go, I'm glad you used that word because that's exactly what's going to have to happen anytime you have the principle of resemblance. All right, I hope that explains it to you. Hope you 
Have a great day. Finish off the rest of this day. I'm just glad to hear that no one gave me that cut sign on this video that the audio is coming in. Again, guys, sorry about that. Let's get going. Come tomorrow, I'm going to explain a really, really important thing to you. It's called cost versus benefit. And this will explain how, we again, we move forward into establishing that incredible relationship that we're all trying to have with our dogs. I hope you're finding these lectures helpful, and if you are, please share them. I cannot tell you how many people are starting to connect with me now because you've been sharing them. Well, continue sharing them, and then tell whoever you shared it to, hey, if you enjoy these videos, you got something out of this, definitely, definitely share it with someone else. All right, hey, guys, this is day 19 of my 365-day journey. We got it done. I'm telling you what, I'm not going to give up. I will be here every single day, no matter what it takes. I'll see you guys tomorrow. We're going to talk about cost versus benefit. Have a great one.